you know, overall it's been a good amount of time, right? Waiting for waiting for things. Oh, version is obsolete now, apparently. And Docker composed that YAML. Uh, so what do we have going on in the Docker Compose? What do we have going on? Yeah, version three. Apparently version's not a thing anymore. Who knew? Uh, I mean, we're, we're using kind of a standard image for the, the front end proxy. Uh, and then node 18 Alpine for the front end. And then everything else we're building. We're building um, using our Docker file. We're passing in the whole project as context and we're, uh, we're parameterizing each service with the service name. And the service name also doubles as kind of the path into the folder where the project is. Um, and then if we look at the Docker file, yeah, so we're, we're also taking Rust version or just latest. So we're, we're just using latest currently, um, which is why the builds are often taking so long because presumably there's a new Rust image that we're pulling in and using. So the thing that I could potentially do that would make this generally faster would be to pass in the arg to like pen the rust version uh, because then we would be caching all of these layers oh rip stream <laughs> all right Do it, OBS. Could not access the specified channel or stream key. Interesting. Is my internet down? I thought it was just an OBS issue or a you know CPU issue. Uh, start stream. Yes. Interesting. Interesting. Will we come back? <laughs> Hello, hello. I might be live again. <laughs> Oof. Uh, let's see, my phone, I'm not live. Oh, there I am. Okay, I think, <laughs> I think I'm back. Okay, uh, I'm seriously thinking I may have to do something, <laughs> something different here. Uh, if if doing uh, Docker Compose up is going to be like this. Um, the, so the copy dot dot taking like a minute is interesting too. What that suggests to me is... Ooh. Scott 1969 just followed. 19, Scott B 1969, thank you for the follow. <laughs> uh, let's, let's see. Yeah. Um, do I have a, uh, a, a, like a Docker ignore file? I do. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking too. Uh, target the end. So all of the the old Python stuff from before. Um, DS store VS Code node modules was the thing that I was thinking about. I'm not sure what else. Um, so this is hmm. There's not really anything else big inside of the project. Like all of the media and stuff is, is stored on a different drive. 
can, like, not even inside the WSL. Wait. I'm waiting. <laughs> uh, what level is the Docker file? The Docker file is in the same directory as the Docker ignore. See, it's right here. It does have to pull in everything anyway, uh, or most everything, except, I mean, it doesn't need the front end, but yeah. Yes, um, it kind of has to, I mean, it doesn't. So what we have to do, right? We have to copy in the common stuff, yeah. Because it needs to copy in common API lib and task worker. Yeah. I mean, the alternative, well, there, there are a couple of alternatives, right? I could have a separate Docker file per service. That That's <laughs> what I was trying to avoid by using service name. Um, or I could roll services in. Yeah, the context of the rest of the application is read out. Yeah. But it's just, it's not a lot. It's, it's a, you know, it's not a lot of source code. All, like, this is empty. It's just the readme. The, this is the Rust project. See? We have a cargo file. <laughs> See, the Rust project is actually like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten microservices. I don't want to copy and paste the same Docker file over and over again. Uh, alternatively, I could roll all the microservices into one backend. Honestly, that would be uh, less overhead, easier, less confusing, potentially. Um, it does give a nice clean separation. Why is music so loud? Okay. Um, for like the different API endpoints. Uh, if you want to see what is going on during the build, I'd recommend using Dive. I, I think I did install Dive, although maybe not here. Um, let me let me get a PowerShell window. Okay, maybe not. Was it in here? Nope. I don't suppose this is the right thing. <laughs> ah, snap, huh? Okay, well anyway, doesn't matter. It's finished. Now it's it's a it's a future me problem. Don't think so? Okay. Something unrelated. Uh, okay, so in the front end, I can go back here. And now we have a playlist ID saved on the series. It might be the same app, just not a fan of snaps. I know, I, I, I have mixed feelings about those myself. 
So we have that. If I were to click upload to YouTube, is this gonna cause a problem? We have the series associated with it and the series now has the playlist ID. Uh, let's go ahead and click upload to YouTube. Uh, at some point I'm gonna make a thing where you can like confirm and modify these things, but we're just gonna upload uh, and clear that. And then there should be a thing there. Oh, um, there should have been a task. Should have been a task. Uh, let's see. Like if I go back here to content videos, refresh. Okay. Um, I might need to re log in. One sec. Yeah, there we go. Continue. All right. So now if I go back, and then we try uploading this to YouTube, it's interesting because it should have had, huh, I don't know. Anyway, like the refresh token thing should have worked and things should have happened. And we should see a task here. Uh, maybe there's a JS error. Yes, <laughs> there is. We're not getting that far, okay. Oh no, that's fine. Maybe network error? Uh, I'm dubious about opening the Docker logs for this. Yeah, 422, unprocessable entity. Okay. Um, that's our error. So recording date, invalid value, string, expected string that follows ISO is Okay, cool. So, yay <laughs> for input validation. Uh, so in episodes, upload episodes, YouTube button. When we upload, when we take the stream date. Interesting. Okay. So. How are we serializing that value? Um, well, it's going to structs and we're taking stream date and we are just calling to string. Apparently that, that, that does not give us an ISO 8601 timestamp, um, like a date time. How does one get that? Let's verify that that's true. So if I inspect here and I go to network, uh, let's go back. Okay, clear, upload to YouTube, right? So this is where it's gonna pull the data. So it's gonna look at episodes. Stream date. But when we look at created at, oh, it's also like that. Okay, so we are, we're not returning things as ISO 8601 daytime values. There's no T, there's no time zone. Um, oops. Okay, so that's um, a problem.
That is a problem. So it's, it's down to the thing that uh, converts the episode into episode simple view because the uh, these values are just strings, right? So whatever we're doing in here needs to properly proper properly encode the timestamps as ISO 8601 date times. Why can't we just have a, a method that does that? Format, formats the combine. Ooh, does that work? Is that a real thing? Or is that hallucination? Um, just pass a string yeah except not that can we do like T format self format string Expected one argument found to. Oh no, okay, just out of date. <laughs> All right, there we go. Uh, okay. So, kind of hacky, but for right now. I can just do this. Just needs to be consistent. Okay, and then we Docker compose up again. <laughs> So to do, uh, refactor all of our API responses to properly format in uh, ISO 8601. Yep. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll add that to the to-do column. Uh, ensure. How long before uh, GitHub adds copilot functionality to the project planner? Uh, <laughs> uh, ensure um, API response serialization. Serialization of Dates slash times into ISO eighty six oh one. All right. That that to do list is growing. Also, the load on my CPU <laughs> is growing right now. I can feel it. It's, it's bogging down. The 
if you want to see what all these things are in the to-do list, this, this, this project plan is public. It is uh, findable from uh, the repo page. <laughs> the Frosty Tools. She'll send a morning coding, the rusty API adventure. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the API is feeling a little rusty. Mm -hmm. All right. Just a few more steps to hopefully success. <laughs> there we go. All right, recreating. Okay, so now when it's pulling this hey look this looks like an iso 8601 timestamp um i don't i don't believe <laughs> 428 I mean, that's not impossible that that's actually UTC. Because that would have been probably after lunch on the Sunday when, and this is a coding stream. But I don't believe that the, um, where did I see it? Updated at. Oh, uh, well, maybe, maybe. Stream detail is, no, that, that could be right, actually. Yeah, um, maybe. Okay, well, anyway, I'm gonna click the button. I'm gonna click upload. Uh, we didn't get an error. So do we have a task? We do, and it's com complete, quote unquote, uh, which means it probably failed in some way. Uh, Let's see. All right, so yeah, we can see. Okay, pending a new a new video file. So there's no playlist though. So maybe that failed. Do we have language? We do have language. So that worked. There's no recording date on this. There should have been. There should have been a recording date because there was a uh, stream date here. Okay, so let me pull up the Docker uh, console here. And uh, let, me, let me take a look at the YouTube API output. Uh, can I even show this on stream? So the good news is the stuff that I added previously to redact secrets appears to be working. Uh, EOF while parsing a value. Failed to parse response from YouTube API. Okay, request. Error, playlist ID, just like scanning through to make sure there's nothing secret. So the client ID is not secret. The client secret is redacted. So yeah, I can at least share this. So I did, um, I forget which, I think I, 
I'm not sure if I did that on stream or if that was between, but there was um, <laughs> some issues in the past with the logs revealing secrets. So I've wrapped a lot of the secret stuff in a, in a thing that if you like serialize it directly, it gives you like redacted. Um, you have to like unmask it. So hopefully I will not be leaking <laughs> APEG credentials on stream again. Uh, all right, so failed to parse response from YouTube API. Uh, EOF while parsing a value, one, one column, zero. Uh, so the response body was empty. So I wonder, I wonder if the API documentation was lying. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Really what's interesting is like, maybe I don't want to scroll up there. Uh, what's interesting though is that the uh, the recording date is blank too. Like it shouldn't be. Did we send the recording date? We can see in the client, maybe. So we would have done a, like a post to upload with a request. And it has a recording date, 2024-0303-T-1625-48.000Z. Okay, that seems fine. We got a, res well, we got a 202 accepted, right? Um, so recording date got sent back. And then in the code, is it is it making its way through? Maybe, maybe I missed the step in the YouTube upload API. So we have recording date and the YouTube upload request. Control F, there we go. And then task payload also has a recording date. We copy the recording date from the start task handler into there. And then, oh, Mm. So, <laughs> uh, earlier in the stream, I decided, oh, we're going to say, oh, it's ISO 8601 date time. So, like, we're going to enforce the API receives the right thing. So, we did that. And in doing so, we reproduced the same issue. Uh, from elsewhere, right? So I guess, I wonder what is actually getting, we're not logging the contents of body here, are we? No, generally you wouldn't want to necessarily. Um, So I guess what we need to do is we need to do like dot format here too. Yep. So is uh right. Okay. What does uh, what does this type have in terms of methods? from STR for daytime. Sure, sure. How do I turn a daytime into a string? Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. So there's a, can we, well, are we, are we doing something unnecessary here? I can't just do this, can I? Maybe 
Maybe I can. It's a daytime. There should be like serialization. Maybe this will work. For that matter, could I, could I just do this? Like if that map was acceptable, then maybe just passing option date time is also acceptable. And then our JSON serialization will figure out what to do. All right, let's rebuild. That does mean that, um, let's delete this file. Delete it forever, forever and ever and ever. Goodbye. <laughs> All right. This should be relatively fast. Unless a new, <laughs> a new version version of Rust or a new new image is, is pushed in the, in the meantime. Or I guess uh, what's the other Docker image we depend on in uh, in our Docker file? Right, because we have a base as chef, base so that's Rust, and then in the actual run, oh yeah, Debian, Bookworm Slim. So technically, if there was a new version of this as well, like a new image, then we'd have to rebuild everything from here. Almost there. Okay, recreating. Recreating. All right, so if I go back to here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. And I click upload to YouTube. Upload. The uh, both being complete is not a good sign. It should take a minute, not be instant. Uh, so I assume we'll see the same thing here, where, there we go, okay, processing will begin shortly. Do we have a recording date though? No. That's too bad. What's interesting is like the other error that we're getting, the, like the, the error in the logs, right? Is coming from here where we're trying to parse response. I wonder if, let's take a look at upload. What is upload return? Just a unit, right? Right, because upload enter. Okay, send status. Right. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, let's let's go back to the docs. I wonder if I'm just doing something wrong here. Uh, let's also delete this file. This, this video. All right, so in videos, insert. Okay. Um, there's some details about how we're doing the initial upload uh, request. Mm, excuse me. Uh, da, 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 da. Upload 
video handler. Here we go. So we're Okay, upload type resumable. I wonder if this parameter changes how this initial requests response works. It's not found on the page about this request. Uh, okay. This is the API endpoint, right? YouTube v3 videos, YouTube v3 videos. But the parameter type, upload type, isn't listed here. Interesting. Right, because there's there's another page somewhere that talks about the resumable API, but it's the same endpoint. So why is an upload type listed as an option here? Hmm? Hmm, Google? Do I still have that tab open somewhere? Resumable uploads. It's in guides and tutorials, but it's not in the API documentation. Set the body of the request to a video resource. Yeah, did that. Set the following HTTP headers. Yeah, uh huh, uh huh. And then, okay. Oh, I see. So, in this scenario, content length will be zero and there will be a location. Um, do we, do we, is, is upload ID supposed to be the ID of the video? So I think what we need to do is wait until we get a success and then parse the response of the success rather than trying to, uh, I mean, I, I suspect that maybe this is the ID, but it says right here, When your upload is successful, it returns a 201, and the body of the response is the video resource, which is what we're looking for. Um, and then these other cases result in us retrying or failing out permanently. So I think we just need to move that logic down. Unfortunately, that means that, okay, so like this bit here, needs to move down. Okay. And that means that this needs to be like, let res response equals match upload. Do is we're going to take this out. I'm going 
gonna say, oh, actually, let me get, let me get this whole thing. Yeah. And we're gonna say, res, if I can only type, <laughs> response, uh, a response. Now, that's a unit right now because I need to change the upload function, but uh, that, that'll be the idea. And then, uh, I guess I'll call it body. There we go. Now this is all gonna be wrong because body as a unit it doesn't have a playlist ID, but that's fine. And then once we get all the way to the end here, I'll just paste this. Yes. Yes. Good. That that all looks right to me. Are we? Let's see. Oh, I see. No, no, no. So body is the actual like input body. It still should be called response. That's the part where we're... There we go. There we go. Okay. Good, 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 good. Okay, so now uh, we need to change how upload works. So up upload is this kind of internal function that handles the retry logic. So that means that uh, we need to change type here so this is gonna be result string string so this will be like the um, oh no no this is gonna be a response no not foxy is there a response type there we go okay cool so if that's the shape of that then is this what are we missing here? Oh yeah, semicolon. Okay, so now all this stuff up here is is presumably correct, right? Because now response is actually a response and we can parse the uh, the JSON from it and we're error checking all that stuff. So that should be good. So then it's just a matter of actually having this function return a response and So now we need to re redefine this enum. Is that is that right? Um yes. No? Yes, no. How does one define an enum with a... <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, so like that. Okay, so now we want to return the response if we get a success. And if we get a temporary or permanent failure, then we're gonna retry and, well, in the temporary failure case, we're gonna retry and we'll get a different response. Hopefully, uh, yeah, 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 that, that looks right. Okay, so that's in upload enter status. Okay, so upload enter, there's only one path for success and that's right here. So then in upload, We are, we need to handle getting uh, a response. That, that looks right. Uh, not break, return. Yes. And then, okay, if we get a temporary failure, 
Then we retry. Oh no, we, we, um, upload status is probably misnamed. We're getting the upload status. Yes, we're getting the upload status. So maybe I should rename it. Uh, let's see, refactor. No. Do I not have just a, there we go, rename symbol. Ooh, there's a generate new name suggestion. Ooh. No, none of those things are right. You're wrong, Copilot. There we go. So. Right. If it was a success, though. That's actually kind of a problem. <laughs> that's a problem because now we don't have a responsive return. Right. This is if. Uh, something failed, but oh, actually, the video did actually upload. Um, so in that case, okay, get the status. If it's a success, then we need to return that response because I think it will also have uh, the right thing. But that does mean now upload status also needs to change to have that. Now, what do we need to change? Yeah, so if we if we get the success, then we return okay response. Okay. And then if is is it Oh no, we can't ever get here anymore. Right? Because now we're returning for the for the okay leg. Right? So we can never reach the bottom, which is what uh, which is what Rust is going to tell us by not giving us an error. So I think that's all good, right? So one thing that I'm assuming in this, let's read this. Um, I'm assuming that when we check the status, if it did actually succeed, even though we didn't get a success in the initial upload request, when we check the status, the response will be, um, yeah, checking the upload status. Yep. Process the API response. If the upload already completed, regardless of whether it succeeded or failed, the API will return the same response that was sent when the upload originally completed. Okay, great. That was what I was assuming um, because I have read this before. <laughs> I, it's some something between an assumption and knowledge. Uh, something in between there because I, I have read the docs before, literally on stream, like maybe a month ago. Um, but yeah, okay, so. Let's build. Mm. Oh, I got a message. What does the message say? Ah, okay. I think we're gonna wrap up pretty soon and uh, we'll kick off a raid. Uh, I happen to know someone who is doing a, a 12 hour stream today, doing some Skyrim um, <laughs> that I plan to go and watch. Um, so I think that will be the intended raid target. But that'll be in a little bit. I'm gonna see if this works first. And maybe you do too. Yeah, right? Brainless knows who I'm talking about. <laughs> Why would you hate Skyrim? I mean, definitely Morrowind is better, but Skyrim's good. That might be a contentious opinion that I've just expressed. 
<laughs> All right. Recreating never liked it. Yeah. I got a good number of hours. <laughs> and and many of my copies of it over the years. More than oblivion. Uh, all right, so uh, upload, upload, and refresh. All right, it's processing. That's that's normal. Uh, the lack of a playlist, I guess, is fine, right? Because that's not going to happen now until we finish uploading the actual contents, assuming that happens. But is there a recording date? No, nope. <laughs> still no recording date. So something's still wrong there. Um, if I refresh this though, still no playlist. Did we, um, okay, it is processing. Okay, so the good news is that we are actually uploading the file. That shouldn't take that long. We can probably wait for that to actually happen. Um, but that means that we're not failing out immediately. So I'm not sure why the recording date isn't making its way through. Something, Something's wrong in the serialization. Probably what I need to do is in... Um, F recording date. Task payload. Yeah, I'm not sure what happens with like the serialization and do serialization here. But maybe what we should do is be like Can we do like into into like a chrono? What is what does that convert into? Can we can we give this a, an explicit uh, chrono? Yeah, something. Date time UCC two RFC. Well, what is RFC thirty nine uh, thirty three thirty nine? I don't think that's the right thing though. We don't have a good autocomplete here. Uh, Format. might even be right. Uh, remove these generics. Okay, so um, yeah, I tried that. <laughs> Into uh-huh, yeah. What do you mean? Yeah, N2T. And it doesn't like this either. We have to take zero generic arguments for one generic argument was specified. Um, So removing this generic argument to the into tray, which takes up to one argument into. Let's mean. I feel like generally when I use into, I am. Oh, no. No, the other way was right. But generally when I'm doing this, I use into and I'm assigning it into a variable and I can give the type for the variable there. So this is not working. Maybe the issue is that. Huh. 
Hey, Alex. How's it going? Just sitting here trying to figure out how to use this programming language. Okay, so if I do this dot map you don't you only come by on Sundays uh, no, no chrono C H R chrono yeah something like that and then DT dot format Oh, it doesn't like that. Um, what's the problem here? Serializing that. Uh, oh, right, right, right. Uh, two string. There we go. It's like a check in. Fair enough. Uh, into the trait bound chrono datetime UTC from ISO 8601 datetime is not satisfied. What if I get rid of this? This here. Uh, oh, maybe naive daytime. Time. Nope, still not happy with it. I thought the trait from naive date is implemented for naive daytime. Found. Yes. What about? Okay, go to daytime. So there's nothing, um, wait, in chrono? Date, date, date like, time. Okay, try from, oh, maybe try from? Instead of, or try into? Is that a thing? And then I see. Okay, let me let me grab this out. Yeah. Uh, what a mess. What a mess. Can we... This might be simpler if I do it before. So I say let... Um, none of that. <laughs> Recording date. Eight. ISO. Yeah. See, it wants to do something like this, but this does not work, right? Pretty sure. Yeah, ISO 8601 day time. Uh, doesn't have such a method. We can do map. Doesn't work. Uh, DT, DT dot into, into naive, into fixed offset. Ooh, what about into naive? Does that work? Okay. Then we have DT, which is uh, option. Uh, is there like a flat map? Something where the, uh, because this is going to be an option, right? Let's use the option expect to unwrap the, this. No, I don't want to do that. Um, like I, I want to, because I'm already mapping over the option, right? So can I just like 
unnest, the optionness of this. But yeah, I don't think there is a, a flat map. Some other kind of map. There's a map or. Uh, which is not what I want. flatten converts from option option T to option T maybe so is is rust happy with this now we have an option string so how are you doing Alex by the way on this this fine Sunday maybe morning maybe afternoon maybe evening Whatever it is for you. Um, okay, so the upload completed. So if I refresh this, is it in a playlist? It's not in a playlist. Uh, that's, that's too bad. Okay, uh, let me pull up the logs. So I can make sure I don't uh, show something I don't want to show when I pull up the logs. All right, we did. We did get an error. Response failed classification. Or response failed classification. Brainless says I am so upset with myself playing uh, Mind Over Magic. Hired a student and forgot to complete one of his quests, and it was an easy one. Refill three mana lanterns? Yeah. I have a sense that that would be pretty easy to do. Okay, can I show this log on stream? I think so. Looks like it. Let's try. Did not check before hiring him. Oh no. Okay, so. We got this call to upload task. Uh, it's our upload video handler. It's this part here. And we have a bunch of state information that hopefully is not showing anything secret. Fortunately, I guess I uh, I don't think I am redacting the Redis connection info, but it doesn't matter because it's local. <laughs> it's not accessible from the outside world, so it doesn't need to be a secret. Uh, and then, da, 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 da. so this is like all the app state stuff. And then the body, so this is the uh, task coming in from the task API, calling back to the YouTube API. Are you good, Alex? That's great. Uh, me too. Thinking about lunch soon. We're uh, probably gonna wrap up here in a minute. I just wanna see if I can figure out what's gone wrong with this. All right, so here's like all the payload. So here's our AI generated, uh, is that, was it recorded on March 3rd? <laughs> is, that, is that true? Uh, let's see, playlist position, notify subscribers, recording date. Yeah, there you go. It was, it was March 3rd. And a time. Okay. Um, and then here's the upload video handler debug. What are we debugging? Okay, we're re reusing the idle connection to Google API, and then we get an error. And the error is after all the stuff, right? So here we go. Uh, whoops. No, go away. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, response. Okay. Hopefully there's nothing important in the response. 
Uh, port 403. Insufficient scope. Okay, I see. So this credential doesn't have sufficient scope to do the thing. Uh, to like add the video to the playlist. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> uh, hmm. Dun, dun, dun. Playlist item. All right, so we're trying to call playlist items to add a video to the playlist, and we don't have the permissions to do that. Um, API captions feed partner or SSL transfer encoding. Okay, okay. Well, that's an easy problem to fix. Let me delete this video. I'll try again uh, at some point. So where? You're Batman. No, no, no. I'm Batman. <laughs> uh, where are we doing the authentication where like all the scope stuff is set? Scope. There it is. Uh, this is, this is probably, I, it's just something I copied. It's probably not the right thing. Let's go back to the docs, uh, wherever they might be. All right, so to insert an item into the playlist, we need at least one of the following scopes. Well, I'm not a YouTube partner, so that's not an option. Is that not one um, Google APIs.com off YouTube? Okay. Jake Jardashian, welcome in. Good morning or afternoon for you. All right, so this should make it so that we can authenticate to uh, YouTube and have permission. Happy Sunday, yes have permission to add videos to the playlist. And I did make some changes there to how we're uh, generating the recording date. So maybe this will fix that too. We got just a few minutes left for the stream today. And then we're gonna be doing a raid over to uh, Death Row Gamer, who should still be doing their 12 hour uh, <laughs> Skyrim stream. Oh, something built. Uh, something failed. Uh, no method named into naive found. Well, interesting. Interesting. Uh, 220. This thinks there's an into naive. So why doesn't this? Okay. Well, I think that will be the mystery for next time. <laughs> Let me just push up everything I have so far. Okay, so what do we do? Update episode and series structs to include, yeah, uh-huh. Is that what we did? What, what about this part? I mean, there's this, but there's also a bunch of other stuff. Let's uh, let's let's just commit that, and then we'll generate a new commit message. Update episode and series structs. To include no, that's not what happened though. I mean, that's part of it, but that's not the whole thing. Um, yeah, I wonder. Can I? Can I? If I just select like this area here. Well, wait, 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 wait. If I if I right click here, can I? Yeah, stage selected ranges. And then this one. Good. And then maybe play nope. But that's that's not what changed here. <laughs> Co pilot. You're behind the times. 
Uh, wait, didn't I stage? Uh, I guess I didn't... Hmm... I guess I, I, I staged that part. Oh... Oh... I see, I need to select this whole area. I need to actually select an area? Oh, there we go. I knew that at one point. Alright. Uh, actually, instead of doing this, let me... Um, let's just amend the last commit. Uh, commit staged amend. I somehow still mess this up? No. Aha. No. No. That's this, this is just wrong. Response variable to capture results. It is sure, something like that. All right, so all of this is now pushed up on my on my branch, on the project. I think I have a command now. I was testing that earlier. Project. There we go. In addition to this command that has always existed. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna pause here for today. We're gonna come back to this next week. Uh, next stream will be tomorrow evening my time for some uh, modern Minecraft. Mm -hmm.